In this series, we're going to review a cheat tool called the T-Bar. Think of it as a tool to help you conquer your forgotten pre-algebra and algebra skills. It's a tool for those who may need a little bit of help in getting to a correct answer in math. As a teacher, I like to think students fall into two camps when it comes to math. The first group is students who look at any math problem, look at all the numbers, recognize what they are, what they should do with them, and how to do it. The second group is those who look at a problem and aren't quite as confident as what the first step should even be. The T-bar is for group number two or anybody close to group number two. Using a T-bar will help you take the first steps, lead you through the next steps, and if used correctly, help you come up with the right answer without having to memorize dozens of math formulas. Bethany has a weekend fruit stand. Over the weekend, she only sold 15 apples of the 60 she had in stock. What percentage of her apples did she sell? Let's make a T-bar. Our first step after making the T-bar is to find the rate. In this problem, they're asking us to find a specific rate. That is what we're looking for. So I'm going to put a question mark in the bottom right. Step number two is to label the rate. In this problem, the rate is what we're looking for, but what rate is it? We're looking for a rate of what? The rate of apples sold, and that is exactly what I will label this. Rate of apple sold. Step three is to label the top spot or the part which is the amount of the rate or the amount of apples sold. Remember, step two and step three are mirrors of each other. The bottom says rate of apples sold and the top is amount or numbers of apples sold. If the bottom was rate of people who like yellow cars, then the top would read amount or number of people who like yellow cars. If the bottom was rate of profit, then the top would be the amount of profit. Remember, it is a mirror and the fill in the blank on the top will always match what is written in the bottom. Step four is to label the whole. As a general rule, the whole or bottom left will usually be the original amount of what you started with. Not always, but most of the time. In this problem with the apples, our whole is the original number of apples. Now that we've labeled all three spots, we can begin to fill in the numbers. Remember, the only number that you can ever fill in before labeling is the rate. Never, ever, ever try to put numbers in before you label the other spots. 50% of the time when a student gets a T-bar problem wrong, the student tried to put in a number before labeling. Don't be that student. The only number you can enter into a T-bar without labeling is that initial rate. The first number we come to in the problem is 15. And we have to decide if that number belongs in the T-bar. Because remember, not every number that you are given in a math problem automatically goes into the T-bar. You will have to double check, triple check, and quadruple check that the number you are dealing with matches the label. According to the problem, 15 is the number of apples that Bethany sold. So I can safely put that into the top spot. The next number is 60. And that is the number of apples Bethany started with, 60 apples. So I can fill that into the left. Now that I have two out of the three numbers, I can solve the T-bar, a top and a bottom number, so I divide. TGIF, putting the top number in first, and we get an answer of 0.25. To turn 0.25 into a percentage, I move my decimal two spaces to the right, giving me 25%, and that's it. 